is Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Hello, and welcome to Purple Daily, live on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, where we just want the Minnesota Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And we start with breaking news. The Vikings (laughs) just got serious as a franchise. Kirk Cousins, according to his agent, Mike McCartney on Twitter, has agreed to a four-year contract with the Atlanta Falcons. You like that? You like that? Thus bringing an end to Kirk Watch you like that? Three, one, two, three. You like that? 2024 and the six-year Kirk Cousins era with the Minnesota Vikings. Welcome in. We will be live for as long as it takes to digest this. Judd, your thoughts. Well, first of all, I just uh, took Mike McCartney's tweet retweeted it and put congratulations because another March Super Bowl has been won. Uh, Mike and Kirk have won another championship. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 36 year old, soon to be 36 year old coming off an Achilles tear. And you know, the one thing we never really thought about if any team would go four years, I assumed it was three and the Vikings should stay at two with one guaranteed. Now we haven't even seen the guarantees yet. This could be completely for all we know guaranteed. My guess is at least three years guaranteed. But my first thought is good for Kirk. Like, this is what he does well. He has leveraged a contract that I think most people going on the age of 36 that aren't headed to Canton, Ohio, the second they're done playing, would never get. So I think it's a good deal for Kirk. I think it's good that the Vikings get closure. And move on because I don't think that they are in a Super Bowl window immediately. I think this is good for everybody. I really do. And I can say that fairly. And Kirk and Mike McCartney, seriously, guys, congratulations. You got you got basically to Kirk's age 40 season. Well, we're I think we're still waiting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just like refreshing my NFL feed here. We haven't seen the actual terms of the contract beyond it's a four-year deal, right? We don't know how much you can guarantee money. This would this by the way, if this isn't a four year fully guaranteed deal, it'll be the first deal he signs that isn't guaranteed, right? I doubt if it's four years fully guaranteed. No, uh, I guess so it's three. Once once the the actual money comes out and the guarantees, we will we will send it over to you. But I'm with Judd. A major congratulations to Kirk. Assuming he gets at least forty three million dollars guaranteed, it would make him one of the five highest paid NFL players in the history of of the National Football League, which is just a great accomplishment for the greatest negotiator in the history of American team sports. No question. Dex, I know you're posting a million things right now, but as you process this, uh, what are your thoughts on Kirk officially to the Falcons? Uh, I can't wait to see the terms, but um, you know what? Kudos to Kwesi and the Vikings brass for not buckling. I mean, Kirk and Mike McCartney know what the hell they're doing. They are the Tom Brady and Bill Belichick combo, if you will, of negotiating these contracts. And they obviously went to the Vikings. Kevin O'Connell has a great relationship here. Kirk loves comfortability, right? He loves to be comfortable and said, will you meet this? Okay, maybe we'll work with here, right? I just negotiated a dang car deal on Saturday. It was a whole damn process, and I'm glad it's over wow. with. By the way, for, for those looking Thank for the update there, Deck and Goff. <laughs> New car lease. Car, no, lease or, or, or lease. Just, I got, a I lease? Got okay, it's a lease. Okay. I got a lease. I got a lease. I didn't pay a single penny leaving that dealership. Sign and drive, baby. Um, But this is good for the Vikings to say, you know what? We're not going to buckle here. It's time for us to move on, and it's going to be scary. There's going to be some unknowns. You're going to put your foot in the water that you haven't really dipped into in a long, long time. And let's see Let's see what you come up with here. So I'm, I'm excited for the Vikings in this next chapter. My biggest question is, will yep. the Vikings' new quarterback work on Tuesdays? That's all I want to know. I just want, is it well, J.J. McCarthy? J.J. McCarthy, he will. Sam I can Darnold, tell you that does Sam right Darnold now? work on Tuesdays? Does he? You know, Kobe Brissett work on Tuesdays? This also, well, well I do think that it's, it's legit that the Vikings and Kirk were talking through yesterday. I think this also is a sign that that uh, Kevin O'Connell interview on NFL Network at the Combine 
was very telling because yeah. he talked about it's been an honor to coach Kirk. He started to speak in the past tense, which he hadn't done a couple of days before that. Like he did go when he went on with Florio and Sims on Pro Football Talk Live, he said some of the same things, but he didn't say those in the past tense. And I really think that to a large degree, the Vikings, that this decision on Kirk's part came last year when he tried to stay here. He said, you know, I want through 2025 guaranteed. They're like, we can't, which kudos to them. But I re- I think that that was really the the tipping point because everything after that, Kirk always said then, I'm not going to negotiate now. The negotiations start in March. And what that was saying was the negotiations start in March because that's when I can take my ass to market and see what I'm worth and see if I get the respect. Like that respect thing that he talked about back in January, that wasn't, that was more of a, the Vikings didn't show me the respect when they could have. And this does take Kirk home. I mean, it takes Kirk, it takes his wife home and his dad has a church in Orlando a hop, skip, and a jump from the grandkids. There's a lot of reasons why if Kirk got what he want, which clearly he did from the Falcons, Phil, there's a ton of reasons why this made perfect sense for him. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. I mean, let's uh, settle in here because we're going to we're gonna unpack all of this. By the way, the, the, we have another episode up from when free agency opened about two and a half hours ago. Uh, Jonathan Grenard, one of the top edge rushers on the market, was the first splash out of the gate for the Vikings. So we, we did a full episode on that. That that was so the Vikings came out and said, "Hey, we're not going to let this hold us up." Apparently, according to reports, Kirk and his representation, Mike McCartney and whoever else was on the call, had a two hour call with the Falcons from eleven o'clock until shortly after one, and then the deal came out. And some uh, some great Photoshop work all around the internet today, having those cousins Falcons jerseys and helmets. Oh, it's all incredible ready to what they can do now. Just the photoshopping is well, just AI, so AI impressive. is a powerful thing too. You know, you no probably question have about it. Now, working thirty-two different uniform is ready to rock and roll. Question for you: I- I'm seeing comments here, left and right, imploring me to wave the flag. Should I do it? I've got the flag right, right here, but I want to have the timing be right. Is that, I don't want this to be a celebration of like, like this is a very interesting big day. And I think at some point in, in the show, the flag should fly. The flag should be waved. I don't know if right now is the right time yet. I agree. I think we should. And to be honest, this is going to hurt a little bit. I think we postpone any flag waving until tomorrow. Cause then we can I, really start building like things of, out a little bit more. I feel like at the end of today's show, we could give them a little, I mean, they're That's all asking for it. This is a great, man. I'm glad you brought this up because I see the same comments. Wave it, wave it. I mean, it's literally people are just begging you to wave the flag here, but we want this to be an open, safe space. As you guys so eloquently yeah. said last week Absolutely. for all Vikings fans. Absolutely. And I can tell you, man, like I have heard from more Cousins fans, diehard, ride or die Kirk Cousins fans in the last five days. Heard from another one last night that said, I feel betrayed. I feel duped. I feel uh-huh. like he was only in it for the money. And money is the most important thing. Obviously, he took the bigger offer in terms of we have to we have to find out what the structure is. But he obviously took the biggest offer, right? And I feel like I agree with what Judd said last week. If you're a Cousins Crusader refugee and you're looking for a place, a safe space. Come on in. This is a safe space. You like that? You like that? And if we wave the flag and played Ode to Joy in the first 10 minutes of this show, I feel like we'd just be rubbing it in for people. That's what I think, too. Now, we large, like, we disagree on a lot of things across sports, but, like, we've been kind of in lockstep for years that paying Kirk Cousins this much money He's, he's fine. He's like one of the top 10 or 12 quarterbacks, but paying him this much money does not help the Vikings get closer to the only thing they've yet to do as a franchise winning a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So I personally think this is a great day in Minnesota Vikings history in that they made one of the hardest decisions you can make in life, right? You're in a good job, but a job that you don't love. You're in a good relationship, but it's stale or you don't love it or you're wondering whether you should get married, right? Like, the, it, it, it takes a lot of football front office courage to break up with one of the top 10 to 12 best quarterbacks in the league and draw a line in the sand and say, no, we aren't winning a Super Bowl doing it this way. We're not going to budge. They stared down one of the greatest negotiators in professional sports and said, no more. This is not the path forward for this franchise to win a Super Bowl. 
And so I guess I am celebrating the fact that they finally got off the ride, a ride that was only taking them up against a glass ceiling year after year after year. I am personally very happy that they did this. I do not plan on tap dancing on the sad Cousins Crusaders today. Yet, at least not right now. I mean, someone could trigger me and I could hit the Ode to Joy in about two seconds, but i that's my instinct right now. I think it'd be very fair at some point later in th this show, because as you said, we're going to be on for a while, to wave the flag, because I do think today was the first step towards an eventual Super Bowl championship run. Today's the first step. Today's the building block. Like, you weren't going to win it with Kirk. I'm sorry. Six years, one playoff win, two playoff appearances, three games. That's not going to do it. But today was the first. Like, if Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi are going to earn their keep, like if they are to be recognized as, you know, one of the greatest coaches and one of the greatest GMs in Vikings history, then damn it, you know what? Today is the first step towards them earning their keep. And I'm with you. I also should mention that I was just doing some backgrounding late last week, and from a very credible source, I was told, don't necessarily dismiss the Wilfs mm. as being very much in lockstep with drawing that line. Yeah. Don't because because we've sort of blamed wow. them. Like, are they afraid to lose Kirk? Stella's going crazy right now because she's a Kirk stan. I tweeted a picture of her with a beer. Like, this is not going well. My daughter's very it's upset. Not, she's not very happy. <laughs> she's not happy at all. She's a huge Kirk stan. She's not a dad fan. That's okay. But I I was told on that. Don't assume the Wilfs didn't say. You know what? We tried this for six years. They and they know in 2018 that was a Super Bowl team. Like that was a ready made team. Yeah. You can say you can absolve Kirk of whatever you want for six years, but you cannot absolve him of 2018 by saying, "Well, the offensive coordinator was." Are you really going to blame? John D. Filippo, come on, dude! You've you dude, you have hit on my biggest pet peeve of the Kirk Cousins era. As we sort of put this to bed, by the way, six years, a hundred eighty-five million dollars, some great statistics, some some new variations of you like that, some chains last year, a lot of fun, but six years, a hundred eighty-five million dollars, two playoff appearances in six years, one playoff win in six years. If I were to have asked you back six years ago, we were having these same franchise big picture discussions on the old radio show on 1500 ESPN. We did a four hour radio show and we talked, we talked about, is it Alex Smith? Like, who are they going to go after to replace Case Keenum if they don't believe in Case Keenum? And, and we agreed this was the right move at the time. Kirk Cousins, bring him in. He's a mercenary. He might be the one that gets you to the next step. If I would have told you on the day they signed Kirk Cousins six years ago, he's going to be here for six years make $185 million, and they're going to get to the playoffs twice in six years and win one playoff game. Give me a word that you would have told me six years ago to describe that foreshadowing. Disappointment? Well, I mean, hell, if you had told me, forget that, forget six years. If you had told me, you know what, the Vikings got this incredible deal. It's a one-year, at the time, let's say, $40 million contract. Kirk Cousins, you're going to plug him in in place of Case Keenum with the team that you saw in 2017, and then I was to tell you they missed the playoffs entirely? Disappointing would not be... The, the word that you would use, we don't say on this show. By the way, we do have a statement from Kwesi um, on the Kirk Cousins report. He said, after significant and positive dialogue with Kirk and his representation rep representatives, we were unable to reach an agreement on a contract that fits the short and long-term visions for both Kirk and the Minnesota Vikings. Kirk holds a special place in Vikings history, and we appreciate his leadership and contributions to the team and the Minneapolis-St. Paul community over the past six seasons. We wish him, his wife Julie, and their children all the best. Our approach is heading into free agency, always included layers of contingencies regarding the quarterback position. We are moving forward with plans that allow us to continue building a roster that can compete for a championship. You know what? Let's read that last part again. Sure. We are moving forward with plans that allow us to continue building a roster that can compete for a championship. Mm -hmm. That's worthy of the flag, Judd. Get the flag. All right. All right. All right. Here it is, folks. Championship. You got your flag waving. Today's the first day, the first step. If they're ever going to win a Super Bowl before we die, because it wasn't going to be with Kirk. <laughs> 
So, okay, just back to the, the six-year encapsulation real quick here. The thing that always bothered me about these discussions is people lost sight of what he was brought here to do. He was brought here to help the Vikings win a championship. That's Quasi just said, right? And Quasi is now saying he no longer fits our vision and our plan for winning a championship, not at the prices and the guarantees that he wants, right? But time and time again, over the course of six years, people continued to wrap Kirk in bubble wrap and and shield him from any type of blame. Every big loss was a race to explain why it wasn't his fault. I'm not paying you $185 million over six years for you to avoid fault at every turn. I'm paying you to be the solution at every turn. And for six years, $185 million, he wasn't the solution often enough. He wasn't enough of a solution to get the Vikings to the Super Bowl and to win a Super Bowl. And so I know that Quasey says, hey, he holds a special place in Vikings history. We appreciate his leadership and contributions. What they don't, and I and I get why they don't put this in the press release, and Quasey was not the general manager when the Vikings agreed to this deal. Rick Spielman was. But really, the headline on the Kirk Cousins era is the team came up short year after year after year when built around Kirk Cousins making a ton of money. That's the headline. He put up a bunch of stats, had some fun on Netflix, wore some chains, put up some more stats, right? But at the end of the day, two playoff appearances, one playoff win in six years, the only way you can describe that is a failure. It was a, it was a failure of a six-year era. I'm sorry. And let's break it up in, into two separate things too because th there was the Zimmer Kirk years which turned sideways and weren't great and then there was O'Connell and Kirk which actually did work and O'Connell with Kirk was really good and we predicted that that KOC would actually maximize Kirk but the key there is if you're Kirk at Kirk's age coming off an Achilles you have to say Kevin I want to stay here what do we have to do not how can I get richer not how can I get a long-term contract what you have to say at that at this point in your life having an Achilles is what can I do? What can I do to help us win? What's, what's the details on the contract? Okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 We have the contract. Before I tell you the contract, get the flag. Just get the flag. It's four years and how much guarantee? Genius. All genius move by the Vikings front office to draw a line in the sand. All of it. From Tom Pelissero, our former colleague, our friend, NFL yep. Network, the Falcons are signing Kirk Cousins to a a four year, yep, one hundred eighty million dollar contract. Yep. So that's a forty five million dollars a year yep. average annual value over four years. Yep. A fifty million dollar signing bonus. So he yep. gets fifty million dollars up front, prorated over five years, over okay. four years. Okay. A hundred million dollars guaranteed. He gets 90 million guaranteed in 2024 and 2025, plus another $10 million guaranteed in 2026. So it's essentially two years fully guaranteed. Yep. And a $50 million signing bonus wrapped into that. I'm going to go and, shut the dog up. I'll, and, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Stella. <laughs> Sports dad. Let's, uh, yeah, you muted him. Okay. Stella. So again, it's it's four years, one hundred eighty million dollars, fifty million dollars signing bonus, a hundred million dollars guaranteed, ninety million dollars total in two thousand twenty four and two thousand twenty five, and another ten million in two thousand twenty six, and a fresh start in Atlanta heading into age thirty six. Wow, dude! Bravo, Vikings front office for not taking this bait. Are you kidding me? That's, 36 coming off a torn Achilles, man. That is so much dough. And, I mean, he got his, I guess in a way, right? He did get his two years guaranteed, right? With those two years, those first 24, 25, he got his two years guaranteed, and then we'll see what happens in years three and Dude, four. This but is who surprised? Who's surprised, though? Like, who's surprised? This is how he operates. This is genius. This is the genius of Kirk. And you know what? He portrays an image that's awesome. But at the end of the day, this is what he wanted the bag one more time. And for the Falcons to do this to a guy whose Achilles went 
last October is craziness, but that's good. It allowed the Vikings. I'm sure this was a very easy no. If you're the Vikings and the Cousins camp called you back and said, okay, here's what the Falcons are offering. Do you want to pony up? This is the easiest no of all time. Okay. We started this show and I tried to be diplomatic for the first eight to 10 minutes and said, you know what? Let's not, let's not clown on a guy here. Okay. This is a, this is a day to look forward to what's next. The blank canvas of Vikings football. Dude, I mean, he is the 1988 Mike Tyson of contract negotiations. Yeah. He is 36 years old, coming off a torn Achilles tendon. And he twisted the Falcons' arm into $100 million guaranteed, four years, $180 million. And the Vikings didn't blink, Judd Zolgad. Well, you, but you couldn't. You, they didn't blink. You couldn't blink. This is the easiest decision of all time because they knew the act. They knew the act. Nobody was going to. You don't employ the dude for six years and give him this contract, not at his age, not with the injury. This was the easiest. Look, this is Kirk. It's just genius. It's Mike McCartney and Kirk. Arthur Blank is desperate to win. He was, he was uh, what, two quarters away from a Super Bowl, up by 25 points. He's 81. It's the Mike Illich Tigers thing all over again. He thinks Kirk is the final piece, and I can sit here confidently and say Kirk Cousins is never going to win a Super Bowl. I don't even know he's ever going to make a playoff run. But but for the Vikings, if you were in the camp of, you know what, I've had enough Kirk, and Kevin O'Connell's telling you, yeah, but I mean, I've turned him around, he's really good. If you were in that camp, this Falcons offer is the greatest thing of all time because this allows you to say, Kevin, I'm sorry, we just can't. And, and even Kevin has to see that. But, you know, Phil, this goes back to last summer when we talked about this uh, and the work that Kevin O'Connell had done with Kirk, and you brought up the, the fact that at some point in time, hasn't he made enough where he wants – to win a Super Bowl? The answer is unequivocally no. Dude, he just became, I just looked this up. He just became, it's a $100 million guaranteed, right? So he was at 231 career lifetime earnings. So it'll be at least $331 million left. He just passed Eli Manning in one, in two hours of negotiating window. He passed Eli Manning, Philip Rivers, Peyton Manning, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, and now Matthew Stafford as the second highest paid NFL player in the history of the league behind only Aaron Rodgers. And he's only 12 million behind Rodgers, who's going to make more money, obviously, next year. Mm -hmm. So I guess congratulations to the Cousins family, no, to generations of Cousins. Yeah. I mean, this is great, 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 great grandkids are hopefully set up now. And his wife gets to go home. He is far closer to his family himself. Like, yeah, this is, but I mean, this is, this answers the question of, yeah, but doesn't Kirk want to win? Kirk found, Kirk found her, his Mr. Miyagi, right? Like Kevin O'Connell was wax on, wax off. I'm going to take you and, and take you from a statistical wonder to being a quarterback who, don't forget you guys, in the course of what, in the course of 2022, in which Kirk led eight fourth quarter comebacks, his overall statistical production actually dipped a little bit. But what did he do? He won football games until the Giants game in the playoffs. And the reality was Kirk looked at that and said, okay, that's great. But where's my money, man? Like Brian, the dog and family guy. Kirk said, <laughs> I want my, my money, money, man. I want my money, man. <laughs> I want my money. Okay. And he beat up Stewie for it. That's what this is. That, that's who this is. And I, I think for the Vikings, in some ways, it sort of gets an albatross from around their neck as far as being dedicated to a guy who we could talk about. And I know when Kirk wants to be popular, he can, but I'm sorry. If I'm a teammate of Kirk's, I am business wise in awe, but you had a chance to stick on a team and possibly win. And you said no. And my personal opinion is that's great for both sides because I don't ever see this guy winning a championship Dude. in February. <laughs> this is wild, man. But in March, he wins. Them. I remember like a couple months ago, I was starting to come around to, you know what? Maybe, God, he's made he's made $230 million playing football. Judd, he's got Kevin O'Connell. He's got Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson. He's got one of the top three pass-catching tight ends. Brian Flores came in here with a defense. And he, th this is probably the first time where he sits back and says, you know what? Yeah, I don't, there's probably some other teams that would desperately break the bank for me, but Minnesota's a really good spot. And I was starting to maybe... Go down that path. And you were here as the sports dad to say, oh, dude, 
He is who he is. Nine years, when someone shows you who they are for nine years, and I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. Like, he is just looking to maximize his limited window to win money. You know, we can all sit here and say, well, if it was me, we've never been in a position where someone's offering us $180 million over four years. So some of it's probably, I I do believe some of it's about, he wanted to know where he and his family were going to be for the next two or three years. If the Vikings were saying, we can only really guarantee that you're going to be living in the Twin Cities for one more year, and we can guarantee it even more when we draft J.J. McCarthy with, you know, the fifth overall pick after we trade up in. But this makes it cleaner, dude. Like, you pay off the $28.5 million hit from his last contract now. Next you have year. top five cap space in the NFL next year. Yep. And you don't have to worry about this weird dance where, like, oh, we're paying Kirk a ton of money to be kind of a bridge quarterback, but we're paying him way more than a bridge quarterback Yep. And then while we're paying him all this money, do we waste our only first round pick on a quarterback that's not going to play until after he's gone? And it just eliminates that entire murky area. And now now they're going to, I'm sure, sign a bridge quarterback of some kind. Sam Darnold continues to pop up in reports. But hey, if they do this right, Sam Darnold's a backup starting in week one. They draft a quarterback. Right. He's ready to start week one. But yeah, dude, this is it's cleaner. It's better. They might take a step back in 2024, but they weren't winning a Super Bowl, continuing to pour buckets of money into Kirk Cousins, and they finally got off the ride. And this also, so I, I think the one thing that that Kirk, uh, a non-financial side, did object to is I don't think he had any interest in, in having his real successor be drafted. Like, I think Kirk thought, well, I'll come back and you're going to add a guy in, you know, first round in the draft that's going to help the team because then I'm all about trying to win. And, and more importantly, the threat of JJ McCarthy is not there. You know, Jaron Hall is a fifth round pick. He's the type of guy who I think you take with the philosophy that we've discussed a thousand times, which is do you just draft a quarterback every year? Because you can, and you can justify that. Uh, but I do think that Kirk had an objection again from the respect thing. How how does this affect Kirk, right? Well, if you take McCarthy, one, you're not improving the team for me immediately, but more importantly, you're also putting a direct threat. And we always go yeah, back and he, to and he's right. He's right. He'd be right about all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But but the thing about it is this in with the Falcons, he's gonna get everything he possibly wants. Yeah, Dex. What's uh breaking news. Free agent coming to the Vikings. Oh, dude, Vikings are on fire That's right now. Crazy. Go ahead, Dex. Andrew Van Ginkle coming to Minnesota from the Miami Dolphins. Oh, wow. Two year, $20 million deal from Schefter. So, Andrew dude. Van Ginkle, who was on our list of, of a targets that the Vikings could get. Yes. Wait, so you're telling me, you're telling me all you guys want Quasi fired, right? Like, fire Quasi's ass. He had a bad draft in 2022. But two years in, okay, he played along for a little bit. Okay, we'll bring Kirk back, see what Mm -hmm. happens. That was fun. Win 13 games, eight fourth quarter comebacks. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden now you look up and the Vikings have said no to an absurdly ridiculous Kirk Cousins contract demand. They've replaced Daniil Hunter with two really good edge rushers in Andrew Van Ginkle and Jonathan Grenard. And they have top five cap space for 2025. Quasi is cooking right now. Well, the defense cooking too. right now. And and guess who? The happiest person right now in TCO Performance Center. You know who it is? Ryan Flores. Dude. And if I'm not mistaken, so if if you put this together as well, Grenard is a three down guy, so he could stop the run, and he can rush. Van Ginkle is more of a pass rush specialist. Correct. We we've talked about him. He but he did play like full time snaps because of injury toward the end of the year. But he's sure. more of a, more of a rotational. But well, what I'm so saying yeah. is, so so now you've got your you've got your Daniil replacement, and this is actually an upgrade and probably your Wanham replacement. Comes in on third down, pins his ears back. Cause you want to pin your ears back Dude. when it's pass rush time. Pin him, pin him. You want to pin those back, and you want to get after the quarterback's ass. He does look like someone that would not just suplex a quarterback, but would suplex someone in a WWE ring, too. He just looks the long hair he's got. He's got the the old Dan Campbell hair from Uh back in the day. Oh, yeah. This is great. Let's get it, Big day on defense, which I'm all for. I'm all for. Finkel and Einhorn. Finkel and Einhorn. Is is there a Schefter report out there about Daniel Hunter? I just saw something in the comments that went by. Yeah, if you guys in the comments, if you see stuff, we're we're literally just like, 
Our Flat feeds up. are flying a million miles an hour right Where's now. Where's our so producers? Where's my do, personal producer? Well, they're posting stuff on social media for us right now. AJ, Ross. No, I went to my personal pr- producer at home. Oh, That's what I thought I you were ripping AJ and Ross right oh, there no. for a second. What? No, no. Say it to their face, sports no, dad. I'm not going to rip. No, I love those guys. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> I was just joking. Uh, Van Van Ginkle, by the way, last year had six sacks, eight passes defended, a pick six. Very active in his in his uh, sort of part time role as a rotational edge rusher. So, holy cow! All right, six thousand three hundred people currently hanging out with us right now, live on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. A half hour into this uh, second chunk of the free agency frenzy bonanza that we're all experiencing today so what what do you think for, for all of those who said well if kirk leaves you might as well trade jj justin jefferson's as good as gone if, if, he, if kirk doesn't come back what do you think the reaction of the jefferson camp was when the vikings probably called him and said hey here's what the falcons are offering kirk and by the way if we pay him this how about you take less then because yeah. we're not going to have as much to spend i i think this is probably the biggest pivot in the history of wide receiver pivots from my guy's got to come back right to oh okay i'm cool yeah I, I would i would tell justin listen man we're saying goodbye to kirk you know it's going to be tough for you obviously but you know your biggest your biggest game of the year came with nick mullins <laughs> as the starting quarterback but i've got three words for you justin andrew van ginkle that's right Justin. My arms are getting tired. I, I don't know how much of a flag wave Van Ginkle deserves. <laughs> Ginkle. So let's, okay, let's get into sort of the what next at quarterback here oh, in a second. We'll keep an eye on other free agency news. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and the like button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel as we sit here and parse through the free agent chaos right now. Yeah, click that like button, the subscribe button, the bell notification button as well. So you can be alerted when we do go live and post new content. If you're new, maybe you're discovering Purple Daily for the first time here today. Welcome aboard. This is a safe space for Vikings fans with all different types of opinions. The only thing we all have to have in common is the motto and the signature tagline of the show, which is we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I'm Phil Mackey. That's Judd Zolgad, the sports dad. This is our executive producer, Declan Goff. Ah, and the show is presented in part by our friends at Nicolay Law. A shout out to Nicolay Law, Russell Nicolay. You may have seen his face on a billboard or two around the Twin Cities. He's a huge Purple fan. And Nicolay Law knows that when you or a loved one gets injured, ordinary life can come to a stop. Things can get complicated. During that time, insurance companies are likely to pressure you. They don't care if you get better. They're just a bunch of uh, unempathetic you-know-whats. Nicolay Law, totally different. They care about you. They've seen all the plays that insurance companies run, and they'll go the whole nine yards to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an incident. Get Nicolay by calling 1-855-NICOLAY or go to nicolaylaw.com. So Diana Rossini and others have continued to report in the aftermath of Kirk Cousins to the Falcons officially that Sam Darnold is someone to keep an eye on as a bridge quarterback here. So Minshew is still out there. Ryan Tannehill is still out there. Sam Darnold. Do you guys have a strong preference or any thoughts on bridge quarterback here? I'm much more passionate about just nailing the right quarterback of the future in the draft. It's less about who's going to play for six weeks to start the season. But just like Sam Darnold, your thoughts on bridge quarterbacks. Okay. I'm fine with that. Look, first of all, when it comes to these guys, um, I remember being completely uh, underwhelmed and he was not supposed to play when Case Keenum got signed here. If you recall that I was never like, Oh, Case Keenum might play and he's going to be great. Okay. So first of all, there there's a, sometimes uh, we simply don't know, but second of all, this is today's all about the um, roster construction of the future. And 2024, like we've got to get past this. Well, if they're not competitive, I'm going to be upset. Why? If they're doing the right thing, so many teams in this town get stuck on, well, we got to be competitive year in, year out. That's not how you win championships. And how many times do we have to be beat over the head with that lesson? So if it's Darnold, if you told me they're signing Sam Darnold to a three-year contract, I think he's going to play the whole time. Then Fully yeah, guaranteed like, $40 like, million well, dollars a year. What are you doing? But <laughs> I'm with you, man. You got to, this is all about drafting the quarterback, getting your ducks in a row, improving your personnel 
adding depth, which this team is sorely lacking in. Like, they don't have a lot of depth. There's so many steps. So, like, well, 2024 might be rough. Detroit's better, and Chicago looks to be certainly improved, and the Packers are going to be good again. What are the Vikings going to do? My response to you is they're going to build a roster out. That's what they need to do. They haven't given themselves that grace. You know, we always talk now, right, about give people grace. Give people, understand what they're going through. Understand what your team is trying to do. Not guaranteeing it's going to work, but give them the grace of a a season in which your expectation isn't playoffs or busts because you got Kirk. Take a step back, understand what they need, and understand until they start to take steps to address that, they are not going to get themselves into a championship window. This is going to take a little bit of time. Give them that time. If it fails, it fails and they'll be fired. But if it succeeds, guess what? It's it could result in a very good run in the playoffs, if not a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And you look at you know the last draft with ceiling and floors of what could happen, right? Like everyone thought the Texans, even with C.J. Stroud, like that was still going to be a process, right? That was going to be a five or six win team at best, and they're going to be building something around him. All of a sudden, C.J. Stroud's balling out, and they're in the AFC divisional game. And now here they are going to be able to throw haymakers with all those great quarterbacks in there. And yes, you have buffoons like the Panthers who fire coaches and GMs every single year and their owners throwing drinks on fans and they draft Bryce Young and that might be a disaster, but it's not completely over for him yet. There's variance that's always involved. But if the Texans and those other teams can do it, the Bengals moved on from Andy Dalton and got Joe Burrow. The Chiefs moved on from from Alex Smith and got Patrick Mahomes. The Chargers moved on from Philip Rivers and got Justin Herbert. The list goes on sing it dex it's All gonna be fear mongers out there it's gonna be fine the lions moved off beloved matthew stafford and jared goff almost brought them to the gd super bowl the detroit lions yeah, for god's sakes it's yeah. gonna be okay whether the variance is the highest or the lowest you're gonna be okay dude it is uh I know we're going to hear it like they're going to sign they're probably going to sign like sam darnold today for five million dollars or something and you know, this is what you wanted. You wanted to say goodbye to Kirk, and now you get quarterback purgatory. And now they're going to draft. There's there's this. I get it. We've been damaged by drafted quarterbacks, man. Like, T-Jack was a second-round bust. Christian Ponder was a first-round bust. Teddy Bridgewater's leg blew up. It's been a while. I mean, Dante Culpepper is the last shot that the Vikings took back in 1999. And they, and they nailed it. He sat for a year, and he was excellent for a few years. But it's literally been 25 years. And if you're a younger Vikings fan, you don't know what it looks like for the Vikings to take a shot successfully and draft a stud quarterback in the first round. Is there a chance that they venture into this this blank canvas, this new world, and they whiff again on a Christian Ponder? Of course. That's the risk, though. But you, you can't hit a home run without swinging the bat. You can't win a hand in poker without actually playing a hand. You can't just keep folding. And that's what they've been doing for years and years and years, playing it safe. And Kirk Cousins is the ultimate safety blanket quarterback because he guarantees that your franchise is going to win at least seven games. Like your your floor for Kirk Cousins is seven wins. A disaster season with Kirk Cousins is seven wins. Right. But the glass ceiling has been there for nine years. He guarantees you're going to win seven, but he also guarantees you're going to come nowhere near an NFC championship game, nowhere near a Super Bowl, winning a Super Bowl, right? So at least they've now taken the glass ceiling off the franchise. It's up to them. They got to nail a draft pick. They got to build a roster, use the cap space, everything. But it's to me, it's the judge said it off the top of the show. This move today and then whatever happens going forward is the first step to being actually serious about building a Super Bowl blueprint team. And I, I, I'm excited for Vikings fans to come together, hopefully on this show, and maybe get excited about the same quarterback for the next couple of years. It's been so divisive for the last at least four or five years of this thing that I'm excited for everyone to kind of say, you know, okay, J.J. McCarthy, completely clean slate. Let's all, let's all see what happens with eyes wide open here. Well, and I guess my question is this as well. Who is beyond the Cousins Crusaders who are now going to defect to Georgia with him? Who is saying Vikings didn't match that? Like if you're a Vikings fan and you're saying that, you're crazy. This contract's the easiest no in the history of no's, considering age, injury status, all of that. The other thing, though, to go back to um, 
post Dante. Okay. The quarterbacks, the Vikings have taken chances on and drafted. Let's look at the people that drafted them. Brad Childress came here as the OC from Philadelphia, but Andy Reid didn't allow him to call plays. And he took a second round. I believe the Vikings made a trade with Pittsburgh to get the last pick of the second round and took Tavares Jackson. That was not a first round pick. Um, and in retrospect, I don't think Childress knew as much or developed quarterbacks as well as we expected or thought. Okay. So that's strike one. Strike two is Ponder. Ponder was taken by the dysfunctional marriage of Rick Spielman and Les Frazier. Les Frazier was a <laughs> the defensive love, the guy love child. <laughs> who wanted Donovan McNabb and got him. And so Spielman, yeah. who, by the way, taking QBs, as Spielman himself said on Sirius a couple of months ago, if I could if I could have picked the right QB, I wouldn't be on the show right now. I'd be a GM still. Um, Teddy was essentially signed off on, I think, mostly by Norv Turner. And his story ended up being a sad one. But the reality is, if you guys recall, shortly thereafter, Norv and Mike got into it and Norv quit. So like that was, so the best that you came among those three was Norv, who did no QB play. This, but this is Kevin O'Connell's calling. This is what he's here yes. for. He yes. was hired. This is the first time that we're talking about a coach that supposedly we could trust, that, that this is his mission like among the top things when he got hired on the bulletin board in TCO was can find a quarterback. So, so I would not draw the same parallels to Childress to certainly Spielman and Frazier or to Norv Turner, who is the OC suggesting a quarterback. Yeah. This is one of the main reasons why Kevin O'Connell wasn't allowed to leave the building. So this is today should be the greatest day of his life. You're getting your chance, Kevin. Yeah. This is and what you but, wanted. But, it, but you're getting your chance. That's what, again, Kirk Cousins is the training wheels, man. If you're a new head coach, awesome. I get to tap into a 34, 35 year old veteran quarterback. He understands how to prepare for a season. He understands a playbook. He understands commanding a huddle, all these things. And it is nice, I'm sure, as a rookie head coach in your 30s, by the way, to just, all right, I get to partner with someone that knows what they're doing here, somebody I've worked with before. But at some point, you had to take the training wheels off the new guys that you hired. If you were going to fire Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer, I get the Zimmer firing because Spielman and Zimmer weren't on speaking terms anymore. The defense had completely eroded. Zimmer was miserable. He wasn't getting along with Kirk, it seemed like, right? So I get it. But like the front office, the ownership, the ownership said, we're going to blow both of these guys out because we need a massive change in the direction of this franchise. And then they ran it back with Kirk for a year and then another year. If they would have done it again, I would have sat here and said, well, what was, you know, what's the point? Are, just let Mark Wilf and Ziggy run the organization, right? I mean, those guys are clearly making the decisions if that's the case. Right. But this is the first time now. And there's been, there, you know, they've systematically let go of some of the Thielens and the Kendricks and the Dalvins. They've been doing this work to reshape the core of this roster for a couple of years. But this is the first time now at the most important position and all the cap space they have through 2025 and 26. Now we get to see what the new leadership of Quasi and KOC yes. is actually capable of. Yes. And this will be, I, I don't think it's a leap to say this. And I, I don't even know this qualifies as reckless speculation. It doesn't. This will be O'Connell's pick. Like Quasi will certainly play a role, but yes. you didn't hire O'Connell for Quasi to come downstairs and say, or go upstairs and say, Kevin, this is what we're going to do. This is going to be, this is, this will be, um, April will be, or should be Kevin O'Connell's defining moment as the coach of this team and will largely decide his future. Yeah. So, you don't you don't send a student to Harvard Med School not to become a doctor, right? Like I'm going to stay at Harvard forever. I love med school. Mm -hmm. Okay, son. No, the job is to go become a doctor. This is where Kevin O'Connell gets to be a doctor of a quarterback. Yeah. Hey, uh, on air production meeting. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should turn this into event line. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Bring some fans in here. Get people's thoughts. I mean, this is love it. This is legitimately one of the biggest days in the history of the franchise. I mean, they made a huge decision to say goodbye to one of the best quarterbacks in franchise history. A guy that started more games than anyone but Tommy Kramer 
and Fran Tarkenton. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was this was an era of Vikings football. I mean, this was a very notable era of Vikings football that they drew a line in the sand and said mm -hmm. no more. And so uh, we should at least hear from some fans here as we continue forward. The email address, if you want to get on here and and speak your mind about Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, four years, $180 million, send a note to vikingsventline at gmail.com, vikingsventline at gmail.com, and we'll get to a few in the coming minutes here. Um, Non-Vikings news real quick, Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. On a major contract. Aaron Jones released by the Packers. Wow! So they you? replaced him with Josh Josh Jacobs. Aaron Jones, no, absolutely now he's banged. Me. He's banged up a lot. It feels like, but he brings part -time. a skill. But part -time. he brings a Come skill on. set. I could see. I can see that skill set. I like him. I do too. I would pay him a lot, but I like him. Totally interested in that. Uh, Bakhtiari was cut by the Packers yeah. as well. You talk about see that going, made his going to the Jets. That made his bones. Oh boy, did he make a lot of money. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, this is, like I said, this is just one of the straight-up biggest days in, in Vikings history, and it feels refreshing. It really does, man. Like, I don't know if I could have stomached another two more, like, all right, two more years and pretend like you can keep pushing the same rock up the same hill. I'm excited to talk about what's next. I'm excited to see what's next. I'm excited for the fan base to feel refreshed as well. So, bravo to the Vikings for, for not caving in on this one. I gave this a lot of thought the last week or so because honestly, while I think that it is fun to hit a reset, if Kirk had returned on like a two-year deal that was really a one-year, I could have seen it. Like, like I, like I could have seen it. But when you see the terms, four years, a hundred and eighty million bucks, a hundred million guaranteed. I mean, I, I don't think anyone beyond the staunchest Cousins fans, could have supported it. And I think there's a very good chance that if the Vikings had matched this, Quazy would have been signing his own termination slip. Yeah. Yes, I think he... I, I, I mean, if he has another bad draft, I don't know that he'll if, that he'll see much more than another year. Yeah, anyways, the 23 draft, though, contracts, but, in yeah. his defense, the 23 draft did improve a bit. So, like, I, like, I think this could work. But I just... That contract, to me... The Falcons, big cojones there, but I'm not sure they're the smartest. What would you say to Falcons fans? I'm sure there's some Falcon Falcons fans that are lurking here on this YouTube channel right now, trying to figure out, okay, what do Vikings fans and a Vikings podcast think about Kirk Cousins? What would you say to Falcons fans who are signing up for the Kirk Cousins experience? I would tell them that, uh, especially in the, NFC South, that you're going to make the playoffs, that you're going to be competitive, and that at the end of the day, though, uh, Kirk Cousins is is the Lucy to the Falcons' Charlie Brown, which is when you do make the playoffs, he will pull the football out from under you and you will fall on your back. That's what I would say. Yeah, I would say you're going to unlock Drake London a little bit more. You're going to unlock some of the other weapons. Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I could see him. The checkdowns to Bijan will be unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think I will say I'm going to defend Kirk a little bit here. I feel like the checkdown thing has been a little overplayed. Well, He's definitely hunted down the field now. Of course, fourth and eight season on the line playoffs. That's the Mount Rushmore of checkdowns right there. I do have one question, and it's about to be. You know what? We're about to find out. Was Kirk bad at the screen game? Or or was and because I don't think he he is, or was that on O'Connell? Because the lack of a screen game, as I've talked about, drove me absolutely crazy. And Bajan Robinson, you would think in a screen game could be absolutely outstanding. Now, it's a good question about the Vikings offensive screen game. But breaking news, the Vikings found someone on defense that can maybe help blow up opposing teams' screen games. Welcome back home, Blake Cashman on a three-year oh, contract. Linebacker Blake Cashman. Oh, they, 
listen to our shows. It's three, clear. dude. These they've literally plucked from. These are all names from our top ten list on Saturday. Look at us. This is uh, crazy. You listen. You it's like us. three you years. Like Blake Barrett's local agent too. Three years, twenty five and a half million dollars. I don't know what the guarantees are, but wow, Vikings oh, God. Hold on. loading up on defense today. Brian, Brian Flores, this one's for you, baby. This Let's one's go. what a what day for Brian Flores. What a day. <laughs> Three. So, Three additions. Yeah, real quick here. Blake Cashman, so he blew away the PFF projection. They had him two years, like $8 million. So he, he definitely blows that away. But he'll be a, he'll be a sidekick to Ivan Pace Jr. Mm-hmm. He's also only 28 years old and uh, really didn't have a whole lot of tread come off the tires in his first four years. Last year was the first real high usage year for him. And he was the eighth highest graded linebacker in the entire league, according to Pro Football Focus, a breakout year in his fifth season with the Houston Texans. I like well, this. They've two guys. You know what? This yeah, all dude. this also a, a signing like that does because I, I see comments about Blake Cashman. I, I saw a comment asking if if he sucks, which as Phil just said, he does not suck. But this also starts to give you some depth. Like, do you remember how I, I just, I go back to last year and the rotations, right? Like there was so little there and defensively, I, I do think that a lot of us, as much as we appreciated it, I think a lot of us sold Brian Flores short. I think Brian Flores probably get, got done. And I know that the defense, especially after Byron Murphy Jr. got hurt late in the season at Cincinnati, I know it dropped off. But I feel like the season got done and Brian Flores probably took a deep breath and said, that was some of my greatest work ever. <laughs> so I am glad. Good on him because he they need more depth on defense. And, and now having two guys that could put pressure on a quarterback and a linebacker who's going to be an upgrade probably or almost certainly. Like these are the things that need to be addressed. And Phil, to go back to a discussion that we've had a lot of times is when you're cap strapped because of your quarterback – you can't address things like this consistently. Yeah. And and some of this is like they, they now have the luxury of shoving money into 2025-26 that, that Kirk's contracts continued to take up space there. Mm-hmm. But think about this. So today, Kwesi has drawn a line in the sand, rightfully so, on these Kirk Cousins contracts. He goes to Atlanta, and he has added three very key starting caliber pieces to this defense. Now, I'm assuming they're saying goodbye to Daniel Hunter. We're still waiting to see where he winds up. So there's, it's not like, you know, they're, they're, they're losing their best defensive player and they're trying to fill the holes, yeah. but uh, Jonathan Greenard, Andrew Van Ginkle, two edge rushers. So they replaced Daniel with two edge rushers. And of course, DJ Wanham is a free agent. They got to figure that out too. And then they bring in Blake Cashman, who's what, four years younger than, um, than Jordan Hicks. Yes. But yeah, Quasi is, Quasi's cooking it up. He's cooking it up today. I got get the flag. Ah, here's the flag, ladies and gentlemen. They're just a little wave. Just a little, I can't do the full out wave every time. Not for Blake. For but Blake I mean, Cash. this is, yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day for the Vikings. It's a good day for uh, building your team. Wow. Okay, we got some we got some vent liners ready to rock and roll here, Declan. It is what so seven thousand people currently skipping out on work on this free agency frenzy bonanza Monday. And I think when you take away the draft party episodes, I think this is currently the most people we've ever had at one time watching the Purple Daily YouTube channel. So thank you guys for helping us get to new heights today. Most definitely. A new era for the Minnesota Vikings. Dex, who's first out of the gate? Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons. New era for the Vikings vent line. All right, let's go to Trey to start. What's up, Trey? Trey. Oh, bro. Wow. For one, good to see you guys again. Um, secondly, want to shout out Purple Daily on draft. Uh, Miles is actually a good friend of mine. So, um, wow. $180 million. Um, wow. That's that's all I have to say about that. Um, that's you like that? good, good, you like good that? for Kirk. Like, Wish them all the best. Thank you for the thank you for the memories and the dimes. Um, I remember one of his first throws to Stefan Diggs against the Packers, that um like 40 yard touchdown bomb. So yeah. good on him. But wow. Um if you guys don't mind, I have I have one kind of write that down-ish 
um, with the third overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Drake May from North Carolina. Wow, dude. Um, and then real <laughs> quick with uh, Phil and Dex being wrestling fans, write that down. Seth Rollins will turn on Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Trey, just um, slinging the predictions, man. <laughs> Love it, so, dude. appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, again, shout out Forness and Miles. I actually play with Miles on a flag football team. I'll see him on Saturday. So, uh, thank you guys for letting me on. Again, last word. Wow. Thank <laughs> you, Trey. Appreciate you coming on. The kind words. Stuff. Yeah, I think I think wow in, encapsulates the last couple hours here for the Vikings, and we'll keep our eye on other news and, and stuff too as we go here. But we've transitioned to the vent line portion. Who's next, Declan? All right, let's go to Rudy. Rudy, what's up, pal? Yo, what's up, players? Man, it's a great day in Vikings Nation, man. Uh, let's just recap real quick what happened, you know what I mean? Uh, year one, came in with the number one defense for, off the NC Championship game. And what do you do? We, we go 8-9 and nine or something bad? And they would, and then the years in between, what is, what is the, it's always something like an excuse, you know, the coaches, uh, the players, the scheme. Uh, we had, what, what is that boy, Filippo? That who was all John D. Filippo, eighty yeah. percent passing. So it was always an excuse in between the years. And then finally, when he actually had something, when we went thirteen and four, what did he do? Fourth and eight. Yeah, hey, let me just throw two yards. That will always be in Vikings history, right there. Aside from that little bomb with Thielen did and the Saints game, but you know it's a great day. And here's another thing too: we got three defensive players right now on free agency, right? So that means we're not going to be drafting them. We're going to use those picks to move up and get JJ McCarthy, baby. Let's go, Skull. Dude, I think okay. Skull Rudy is Rudy is fired up, man. I love the enthusiasm. I love the look. And. He brought up a really good point. The Vikings today signed two edge rushers in their mid-late 20s, mm -hmm. right? Because Van Ginkle's 28, isn't he? He is 28 and a half. He'll be 29 when the season starts. And um, Grenard is going to be 27 when the season starts. Most mock drafts, if not Vikings drafting quarterback, have had Vikings drafting one of these edge rushers with the 11th overall pick. So to his point, now, they could still draft a young edge rusher and now just have a beast rotation of edge rushers, but this this makes it even more likely that they're going to use chips to move up to draft a quarterback, right? I think that's right. The, the place that they still could go defensively would probably be defensive tackle. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that all signs are that they're trying to bolster the defense as much as possible through this and that um, I got to think they're going to – I got to think they're at least going to try to get up to the Chargers pick at five. And would would that be enough? Even could yeah, someone McCarth jump up to four? Well, I mean, is that McCarth would be... is is Mc JJ McCarthy going to go four or Drake May four? Well, I'm guessing if you're at five, one of those three is going to fall to you, or four is going to fall to you. I'm sorry, Drake if you May. Get to, if you get to five, I'm saying you might have to get to four. Is what right? I'm no, saying. no. But I, but what I'm saying is, I think one of those wide receivers. I don't know the Cardinals are going to move off because you know if if they take. Marvin Harrison Jr. at four. Yeah. That's huge for Kyler Murray. So I think you could, I think you at least have to get to five. But yeah, three, three would be nice. I guess the question there is, are you going to give up two future firsts and this year's first to yeah. get up to three? But maybe you will. Let's keep the vent line going here. The post Kirk Cousins era Vikings vent line on Purple Daily. All right, let's go to Seamus next. What's up, Seamus? Hey, what's going on, guys? First time caller, long time listener, season ticket holder based out of Arizona. Oh, nice. Boom. Yep. Seamus, let's go. Yeah, my boss actually just sent me a team's message. He's a Minnesota native, born and raised, and said, did you see it? And I told him, of course I saw it, you know. Um, but really exciting news, I think, in my young Vikings history of being a fan this day um, – is near the top alongside the miracle or the playoff win against the Cowboys in the old Metrodome. So been a season ticket holder for eight years, excited for the future. The enemy of great is good. It's what Kirk Cousins is. We want yeah. a Super Bowl. I love to win, but time to go get our quarterback and really trust KOC. Um, picking the right guy. He's going to pick the right guy, whatever that is at whatever pick. So what a day. Happy for Kirk to judge, judge point. No Viking fan should be upset. That contract, we can't match it. There's no chance. 
four years, $180 million, good for Kirk. Um, but great day for Vikings fans. Really excited to see what happens in April and hopefully in the next couple days or weeks we get some news about a move up in a draft pick. Amen. Seamus, thanks for coming on, man. Skull. Appreciate you thanks, making sir. his debut here on Ventline. Yeah, I mean, he nailed it. We we talked about this a little bit off the top, but it's when you're in that comfort zone and there's there's always like three or four teams where you've got your comfortable quarterback He's really good, and it's unlikely you're just going to flip a switch and replace him with someone apples for apples who's better. It's it, it's comfortable, you know. It's that it's that cushy job that pays you pretty darn well. You kind of dread it, but you got the weekends, you know. It's like, but the the risk of leaving that job for something else, God, you could wind up homeless or something. You don't know, or you could wind up getting into a way better job that pays you double or start your own business and have it blow up, right? Like. To be to be comfortable is sometimes dangerous, especially in the NFL. I agree. Good is the enemy of great. And the, the Vikings have been good at quarterback for six mm-hmm. years, but their team hasn't done anything. Yeah. Not anymore. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, let's keep going. This is awesome. All right. Vikings good call. Line. Good call. All right, let's go to uh let's go to Jonathan next year. What's up, Jonathan? You're on that line. Hi there, I'm a big fan from the UK. Um I'm just so glad we've escaped the mediocrity. Um, 16 and 47 against over 500 teams. Like, I, I mean, I say I'm kind of surprised someone's fallen for it again. It's Kirk being the final piece, but you know, like, it's not that surprising at the end of the day, is it? Because we fell for it. Um, the, the Washington uh, Commanders um, tagged him twice. I mean, he's got the greatest agent of all time. You know, he's a Hall of Fame negotiator, but. I mean, like the the record speaks for himself. He's, you know, subpar. Mm-hmm. Will be a far better team, you know, with whoever it is. I'm not. I'm not fussed with who we have at quarterback because, I mean, as you've seen with the signings today, we've been captain free agency for the past five years um, with his crazy uh, cap pits. But yeah, big yeah. fan, Jonathan. Think, thank you for thank coming you. on, man. Appreciate yeah. it. I think the key thing is we don't know. Like, we don't know for sure how this is going to turn out, but it gives you the opportunity to pivot. It gives you the opportunity. There were, I mean, there were flat out because one of how much Kirk was paid, there were flat out deficiencies that you couldn't fix. And, and what Quasi exposed by accident was because the 2022 draft was so bad. Like, you can't have, when you have a contract like Kirk's, you can't have a bad draft. Which is sort of ridiculous to say. Now, Quazy whiffed on way too many picks, so I'm not defending him. But, like, you can't miss on picks and be like, okay, that cost us because X, Y, and Z. So, like, there's a... And, and, you know, we don't know that the Vikings are going to be improved. But what we do know is that they're taking a chance in a different uh, track here to try and improve. And I'm excited about that. You know, the Kirk six-year relationship had its moments... It, it was stability of eight or nine wins, a couple of playoff appearances. But at the end of the day, you know, you came home every day to Kirk and you knew what to expect. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of variance there. Now, O'Connell did get more from him, but it just sort of got stale. And, and the Falcons basically blew you out of the water contractually so bad <laughs> that you now have the opportunity to to have a new, exciting football relationship that's why you know we get all these comments well purple daily without kirk is going to be dead what are you talking about this is going to be one of the most exciting off seasons probably in the history of this show if not in the history of this show i'm very excited for the the short and long-term future of this podcast because we pride ourselves on being just a a fun daily space for vikings fans who want this team to win a super bowl to show up to be entertained, to, d- to deliver their opinions, which we open up multiple pipelines for that. And it has felt like, in all honesty, the last especially two or three years that, you know, we've just kind of wanted a new era to start. And if you were a staunch Kirk Cousins fan, there was no chance you were consuming this show on a regular basis. And, and, I, and I always kind of wrestled with that, like, man, should... Should one of us like fake a passion for Kirk or something? I don't know. Like that's not us, man. We just we we give our opinions and we don't we're not like Skip Bayless and whoever and 
decide to just come up with something ridiculous just to disagree. I mean, this is how we have felt for a couple of years. And I know that there's some fans of Kirk Cousins that feel like we're just the show that dunks on him and hates on him. And hopefully now, whoever they bring in, at least for the first couple of years, unless they turn into a Christian ponder, and then in which case it might have to take a turn again. Um, hopefully it just kind of brightens the immediate future for Vikings quarterback conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to uh, Alex next year on Benton Line. Hey, Alex, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Declan, as I put in the uh, email to you, I kind of come from more of the Kirko Stan perspective, uh, but also, you know, realistic. I thought he got kind of a bad rap uh, initially when he was coming in from a lot of the outside, not just Kirk fan, or, uh, Vikings fans. Uh, for the contract that he got. But, you know, when you don't home grow a quarterback, you're going to pay top dollar to try to bring one in. So that's not necessarily his fault. It's the the franchise's fault. Would have loved to see what he could have done with a full healthy season this year. I thought he looked, uh, you know, uh, a lot different than he had in previous years, more confident. Um, But, you know, with the details of the contract and the moves that they've made so far this, uh, this free agent period, it takes a lot of the anxiety that I had off of uh, the situation. You know, he was a comfortable quarterback. And, you know, when you stay comfortable, you don't reach your full potential. So, you know, I think uh, I'm a little weary of McCarthy at five. That That's a little more than I would like to pay to, to get up there for him. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, you got to take a chance sometimes. So, yeah. Here's, you here's could, the Super Bowl. You could that's also, like, chance. Thank you for coming on here, Alex. You know, you, there's a, there's a bunch of things you could do. Obviously, trading up is going to be the talk between now and the draft. But if you feel like the cost is going to be too aggressive, it's going to be multiple future first round picks, and you just feel like, how can you be that confident to give up multiple first round picks? It's such a gamble. Well, if you think Michael Penix is more of like a late first round, early second round guy, and okay, we feel like Michael Penix throwing to Justin Jefferson and all these weapons and playing for Kevin O'Connell that we could definitely make that work right on a rookie scale contract. Maybe you go defense or trade back at 11 and accumulate another day two pick and then go grab Michael Penix or Bo Nix. I know Bo Nix is kind of a triggering name for some people, but it is a blank canvas at this point. And I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily guarantee they're going to trade up and make a huge splash. I could see them continuing to look to, build their roster and maybe get an extra day two pick and go that route too. I think this is where O'Connell though gets to make that call. Like if he identifies and there's four guys here, three of them you you could try and position for. And if he says, this is the guy, like this is the guy crazy. that's going to take you and me to the moon here. We are going in the ring of honor someday because of this. Then I think you move heaven and earth to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, while we're talking about Kirk though, and I think it's only fair to point this out, I guess, a, l- a little bit more. Kirk Cousins is going to a team that has a-, a new coach. Now, much like with O'Connell, Raheem Morris and Kirk, I think, also date back to they, they cross paths perhaps in Washington at one point. Morris obviously comes from the Rams. He has hired another Rams uh, former assistant by the name of Zach Robinson as his O.C., that's all great. So Kirk's going to go into an infrastructure, much like with O'Connell, that that he knows. But I reiterate, he's going to a guy that, or he he's now going to a team that has a defensive coach. I don't think we appreciate enough how much O'Connell did as the main, as the head coach here. So we had final say on everything for Kirk Cousins, and and that's what Kirk, that's where Kirk is taking a chance by leaving. Hundred percent. Kirk Cousins was with with. Zimmer here, you can make up any excuse you want, but he was basically a glorified stat stuffer. He yep. was unbelievable. But go back to those last couple of years when the Vikings were losing games and in the fourth quarter, the furious rally himself would bring the team back. And, oh, they didn't lose by 14. They lost by seven. But look at what Kirk did. And it's like, okay, let's look at those stats. Let's look at when he did when, when it mattered and when it didn't, okay? The last two years, Kevin O'Connell has have basically done, Phil, what you have jokingly talked about a, a lot with Kirk, which is, he made the environment and circumstances about as ideal as you possibly could. He did everything. And Kirk succeeded, and it was impressive. He was really good. Playoff game, he was actually good until you got to nut-cutting time, and then he wasn't. But the point is, he's leaving that. And he's leaving that to make more. And good for him on the contract. 
But the reality is when you are going to be, when your head coach is going to be a guy that you might like, but he is a defensive guy first, sound familiar? He's not a guy that centers his life around the quarterback play. Kirk's taking a little bit of a chance here because Kevin O'Connell is probably not going to get the credit that he deserves for doing everything he could to make Kirk as comfortable, and that's the key word with Kirk, right? Comfortable? As yeah. comfortable as possible. Yeah, I mean, you you kind of nailed it in that so much of the discussion has surrounded whether the grass is greener for the Vikings moving on from Kirk, but that's a two-way street, man. There's grass on both sides of this street, and Kirk has decided that the grass is greener in a lot of ways. I, it, it's possible he just wants the money and the guarantees, and it, it, it could have it literally could have been could have been anyone. It doesn't matter if it's an offensive, defensive coach. It might just be that he and his family value where are we going to be for the next two or three years more than some of the other right. circumstances. But it's, man, you're right. You're passing up an amazing relationship with an offensive head coach that's, he's in your headset. He's he's blowing up your phone during the week, like in a positive way. He He is pumping your tires on a daily basis. The best wide receiver in the NFL in Justin Jefferson and really good secondary weapons in TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, right? Franchise left tackle, franchise right tackle, a defense that went from 30th in the league to 15th in the league. An organization, by the way, the NFL Players Association annual, second annual uh, voting came out. And the Vikings are universally across the board in every category, one of the two best organizations in the entire NFL. And you're leaving all of that. You you're leaving all of that. Like that's yeah, that's a risky thing on his end too. And not enough has been has been made about that. Like, dude, he could be coming back. And that first year with the Vikings, new system, everything was overwhelming for him. They missed the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Couldn't work with the offensive coordinator, right? I mean, what if what if he can't work with the offensive coordinator? What if it's another John D. Filippo situation? Success by association. Let's just bring somebody else from the McVay coaching tree over, right? Well, and look at how Kirk changed, too. You know, with, with Zimmer, he was sort of distant. He was not happy, you could tell. Those last two, two years with Cousins, or with Cousins with O'Connell, starting the quarterback documentary, I mean, the dude changed. Yep. Like, all of a sudden, he's uh, Kirk O'Chains. He's having fun. And people were like, well, that's Kirk. That's Kirk. We never saw that Kirk with Mike here. Yeah. I am so excited, so excited to talk about a Vikings quarterback and not have to say Kirk Cousins a hundred times every single show. It's going to be so refreshing for this right, podcast. Drake May for you, a little J.J. McCarthy. Oh, my God. Who's next on Ventline here, Dex? All right, let's go to Tim next year. Hey, Tim. What's up, buddy? Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Good. Tim? All right, so I want to be some doom and gloom, Okay. So I think we've had too much fun here. So, like, I'm 34 years old, okay? What's, so let's be real about the Vikings. I'm going to talk about it since I've been born, since, the, you know, I've been born in 1990. So until then, the only real team that the Vikings have really had were in 98, and Gary Anderson missed a kick that could have brought him to the Super Bowl. Since then, the Vikings have never really had a quarterback, not really that could really bring them somewhere. They've always shopped around free agency. They've done the, the, the uh, free agency thing and they haven't gotten the people. Now I'm glad Kirk is gone because there's no way the Vikings could pay that money. That is, that is robbery. And he just robbed the Falcons bad. Um, but I do have a prediction and the Vikings um, are going to play the Falcons this year in the playoffs. That's what I, I have this for next year. But brings me back is I think this is O'Connell. This is his – he's putting all his chips in. And so Quisi, because if they don't get this quarterback right in the draft, they're all getting fired. Because I, I think so. I think next year, that's it. If they don't get this right, which I don't think they will because the Vikings never do. And I think what will end up happening is they'll bring a quarterback in. He won't be a fit because if we look at history – of the Vikings, have they ever gotten it right at quarterback drafting in the last 34 years? Well, they now, haven't. Tim, thanks for jumping on here. Tim, a little cold bucket of water there on the show. Dude, they've only, how many times in 40 years have they even taken a shot in the first or second round for a quarterback? They don't take shots. It's like once every 10 years, they might take a shot in the draft. Like an at, not a Jaron Hall shot or right, John like David Booty, all due respect to Deck. I hear you. An I actual you. shot, right? They don't take shots. 
Tim, it's sports dad here, okay? I was 20 when you were born, so let's talk about this for a second. First of all, let's not sell, and I wasn't a big fan of his from a mentality standpoint, but let's not sell Dante Culpepper completely short. Dante Culpepper's knee blew up, um, but 2004 is one of the greatest seasons I've ever seen from a Viking QB, and that QB was better than Kirk was. Kirk's best year, Dante's best year, better. Um, It was a borderline, if Peyton Manning didn't exist and didn't have a great year, it was an MVP type of year, okay? Mm -hmm. I feel like we sell Culpepper way, way, way short there. Um, Unfortunate circumstances, but that's number one. The other thing is, is Tim, remember, as we talked about earlier in today's program, Kevin O'Connell was hired here largely to get this right. Like the Wilfs can be blamed of a lot of things, but the Wilfs want to win. And the Wilfs have seen, I I contend without, without knowing this for sure, that Rick Spielman was fired in part because he couldn't find a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, Teddy was too bad, not his fault, but Ponder was his fault. Signing Cousins was his fault, which was a you know desperation play that didn't work out at all at the time. So, Tim, I, I would say, I don't think it's fair to assume that just because this franchise has swung and missed, and to Phil's point, it's only been on rare occasions. You could make the argument that they should have been drafting quarterbacks more. That's a whole different discussion. But Kevin O'Connell is here to do this. Like this, again, this is his moment. This is, right now, starts his moment. And Tim's right. If they fail, they will all be fired, but they deserve the opportunity to try. But like, uh, I'm so I'm, not that I'm also of, I'm not that I'm so sick part. of that way of looking at everything. This like, oh my god, what if they miss on the quarterback? Oh my god, if it doesn't work, they're everyone's gonna get fired. Okay, okay, yeah, they but will. but what if they hit on the quarterback? What if they hit on a Josh Allen, a Lamar Jackson, a Justin Herbert, a Patrick Mahomes? And that's what they deserve the chance. Jordan to do. Love, C.J. Stroud. Yes. But they get what, the grace to try this. And if they hit on one of those guys, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get extensions. They're the and they're going to go deep in the playoffs. And they're going to have stability for years and years. Yeah. And they're going to be able to build a monster roster. Like, the way that so many Vikings fans look at this as, oh, my God, the worst possible but, thing that could happen because it's happened. Like, look at the bad things that have happened before. Okay. But Tim Then maybe Vi- they're due. They're due for a, for a big swing and a hit at quarterback. But Tim needs purple therapy because he's not now at least he didn't say well if you let cousins go that's going to be a huge mistake because like like there are some the fear mongering is twofold to me it's cousins if kirk, if kirk goes who's going to replace him and it's the longtime vikings fan who just says we've always bleeped this thing up but you need purple therapy baby you just need to sit back and understand like the circumstances. There's no reason why Kevin O'Connell should be expected to repeat the mistakes of Rick Spielman. Like why he's here to do this. This is why you hired him. And yes, is his job on the line? If he screws it up? Absolutely. And that's everyone's fine. job is on the line. Exactly. Bill Belichick the just got is, fired. Like, you, well, and, and you can't, but I mean, if I would agree with Tim completely, if Spielman was still here, and I get the whole, look, 98 was great. I was like six. I really don't have a conscious memory of the 98 season. And that's what the one that everyone goes back to. Well, they had their complete team. They just missed a kick. So are we just going to hold out that, oh, 98 was it? And now we shouldn't even take another shot or they shouldn't even do anything else because we missed our one chance when we had a super offense. They're going to still try. And what's then like, what's really the point in my opinion? And I love having you no know, debates with fans. What's, what's the point of being a fan if we're just going to hold on to one thing that happened to you 40, Dude. 30 years ago? There's no point. There's no point. Then what? That, go be a Packer fan then. Go be a Patriots fan. If this no, is no, all no. you're going to hang your hat on is what the hell happened in 1998. We are here to help. We are here to help. There's fear. There's fear out there, and I get it. But but you have to look at this. This is why we are here. This is why we are. You see, there are some people that claim to be Vikings therapists. But they don't understand how tough this job can be. They don't understand the real fear. And I want them to be Vikings fans. I don't want to kick them off. That That's why the Vikings fans who bought into Kirk, we forgive you. Yeah. It happens. Dude, the, the, this, yes, we are here. And we are certified Vikings therapists on Purple Day. It's a hard We're job. We're here for you. But, but I, I brought this analogy up earlier in the show. And I think a lot of people can resonate with it, especially today with Kirk Cousins. And, and we had... 
the caller from a few minutes ago say good is the enemy of great and he's a hundred percent correct uh-huh I have so many friends, family members in my life that I can think of. Like I remember one of my one of my good friends ten or twelve years ago. He told, and I always thought, hey, he's got a nice house, lives in the suburbs, you know, family, whatever. And and he told me how much he makes at his job, and it was like pretty good, like like really comfortable, nice salary. And I said, God, yeah, it must be must be pretty good. And he goes, dude, I am miserable because my job is so safe. And I make enough money to where it'd be stupid to leave. But I hate going into work every single day. I'm not fulfilling my potential as a person. That's been the Vikings for six years. It's really safe and comfortable to have Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. You're going to be able to live in a nice house in the suburbs and have a family. And it's a good paying job, right? But you go to bed every single night wondering, man, What if I quit this job and took a real shot, started that company I've been thinking about starting, right? Right. Or or interview, took a shot at this other job opening over here that pays twice as much. You know, what's going to happen? They say no. Oh, now you're jobless. Well, you'll go find another job. You know, like, don't get comfortable. You're not actually fulfilling your potential as a franchise when you employ Kirk Cousins for six years. It guarantees that you're going to be comfortable, but it also guarantees that you're not going to do the only thing in franchise history that you haven't done, which is win a Super Bowl. And plus, now you got a chance to get it right. Dude, they quit their the Vikings quit their job today and said, I'm starting that company. Let's go for it. And it's super exciting. And it could crash and burn. But then you know what? They'll just go find another Kirk Cousins and get comfortable again. They drafted Christian Ponder. Was that 2011? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So within six years, they were in the NFC championship game. And actually, the year so, after 2012, they went 10 and six and went to the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. So, and then by the way, four years sure. later, four years later, they drafted another quarterback. Or actually, three years later, they drafted another quarterback. Four years yeah. later, they were back hosting a home playoff game. Yeah. So I'm not and and about to win it if not for Blair Walsh. You're going to continue to take shots. So who's next? Vikings All right, let's go to the iceberg. Here. What's up? Uh, sound good. Nice. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really good, dude. Awesome. Iceberg. Well, let's go. I do this nice. full time. So, um, but go. I'm glad I'm next because I can't. One, Mackie, you called it uh, with Atlanta, like all the way back in October. You got so much crap for Everyone it. Everyone laughed at us. Everyone I did. laughed at us. Put that out there I did. Today. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I put that back Re- out. I'll, retweet I'm gonna go find the original it, right? tweet. Yeah. But I, I can't stand that loser mentality. And so many Vikings fans have it. And it pisses me off. I'm a Cubs fan, right? (laughs) If there's any fan base that knows what it means to suck forever and constantly swing and miss forever, it should be Cubs fans. And you know what? In 2016, after taking shot after shot after shot, not doing the same thing they've done for 108 years, they won the World Series. I know it's not a one-to-one comparison, but Atlanta, I, I don't get Atlanta's thinking here. Like when the Vikings brought Kirk in, they were 13 and three. They had almost made it to a home Super Bowl. It was the last piece. Atlanta is way far away from that, and this seems to me like a complete desperation buy. I am all in on getting a a quarterback in the draft. Trade up. I don't care. Like You're going to have plenty of drafts after this. If you you swing and miss, so be it. Because I have seen just about every team of people I'm friends with either draft a quarterback, like my friend who's a Houston Texans fan, or go to a Super Bowl because they put the pieces in place, like the Rams. I, I The Bears right now, they're doing better, I would say, than the Vikings are of putting a full team together. Mm-hmm. Trade up. I think you have to trade up top three. Like I, I know I'm probably not in the popular side of this with Vikings Twitter right now. I don't see the hype with J.J. McCarthy. I think it's Daniels or May. Go after one of the high-end ones. If you're going to go all in, Go all in. Don't, oh, let's go to five or go to eight or or whatever it might be. Uh, Looking at what the Vikings need most in the draft, they've filled up the the sides they need on defense for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's definitely not there yet. There's still another year or two away. I don't think anyone's thinking this is a Super Bowl team. Uh, But offensively, what do you need? A quarterback, a running back, and probably somebody in the offensive line because when do we not need somebody on the offensive line? You can get a running back at any point in the draft. You can get a guard or whoever, center, whatever, in the middle of the draft. I don't see you know getting a quarterback past the first round that 
we can be confident in going in unless you want Sam Darnold starting out, which at that point, then you're just going for the next year's draft pick. I am completely fine moving on from Kirk going seven to 10 wins a year, having a 13 win blip year that you check down on fourth and eight and then take the day off on Tuesday. Like I don't do, uh, if you get a rookie, you get, you could win three to six games and it could suck. It could, we could get Christian Ponder. Okay. Like we haven't got bad quarterbacks before you get 10, 13 wins, go, you know, put a super bowl team together. I I'm sick of this, this like hold it back mentality because it didn't work before. Well, Okay, so try something a bit different this time. Yeah. Trade up, be aggressive. Fail Don't... and fail fast. Go. Just yeah. like, okay, try it again. If it doesn't work, cool. Try it again. Try I it mean, again. How many quarterbacks have we seen the last few years that yeah, they can they can lead a team into the playoffs, but divisional round is all you can get. But a big but, part of this too, though, is I, I don't. So I don't think we should be hung up on 2024. Great stuff, buddy. If they don't fill those needs, okay, you didn't fill those needs. You're rebuilding a roster, basically. So there seems to be this mistaken. Well, if you don't win, because Vikings fans are used to winning eight to nine to ten games, right? If you don't win next year, it's a failure. First of all, two things. I'm not convinced Bryce Young sucks. Now. The Panthers are a dumpster fire, but mm-hmm. I'm not convinced. He Dude, sucks. Josh Allen was a dumpster fire and, for like two years, right? Well, yeah. And if Carolina had done it right, but because they trade up for Bryce, they, I mean, they had, let's say you're the Vikings and you draft Drake May. And let's say he's not prepared to play yet. And he plays and he gets good experience. You don't ruin him, but you win three games. You know what you get? A really high draft pick, a really high draft pick. If you have your draft pick, that's great. But the fact is, like, this is going to be a process. I, I there's two, We're too hung up. Like, look at today's signings. They're not signing yes. old guys that are going to wash out in a year or two. They're, they're, they're replenishing the roster with serviceable players to, or good players who can step in and fill needs in 2024, but more importantly, probably 2025. So I think we need to, I think we need to quit this whole conversation of, well, you need this and you need that and you need no, you really don't. Okay. The, your running back room. Let's say it ain't good next year. Well, first of all, it wasn't good last year. And second of all, when you're ready to pop, those are the type of positions that you fill. So I, I just think we need to back off this whole thing of, well, if they're not good next year, they're all fired and it's done. Literally today, with Kirk with Kirk gone, Quasi and O'Connell have bought themselves at least a couple of years. You, you can't, can't get a you, you can't, can't get, touch a, them. get an extension after this. I think they right? will. Like no, so, like, right. but like you've just hit on this this really important point that we should be mindful of here going forward. It's two things. One, okay, this this open this move today with Kirk Cousins opens up a little grace period, right? Because now it's all right. Yeah. They, they literally don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be in two thousand twenty four. Yep. So there should be a grace period, but these people that think. They've decided now to strip it down to the studs. Like that saying goodbye to Kirk Cousins means that it's a complete Trey rebuild. Justin Jefferson. It's all, You're it's right. all, no, 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 no. Yep. No, 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 no. There's a really good chance that the Vikings com- compete for a playoff spot still. I haven't, I don't know what the odds are going to be or what the over under win total is going to be. We got to see how the offseason plays out. But your team still has, dude, they just added three really good starting defensive players today Yep. to help replace Daniel Hunter. Yep. They're not done yet. There's still money to be spent going into 2025, 26, too. You could put money into those years. You still have Justin Jefferson almost certainly coming back on a huge contract extension. Now, if they decide to trade him, okay, we can have a discussion. But I don't think you make those signings today and then go and trade Justin Jefferson. I think they're signing him for like $35 million a year. Mm-hmm. This offense has weapons everywhere. Left tackle, right tackle, good coaching staff, like... This team is likely to compete for eight, nine, maybe 10 wins if they can get some competence at quarterback in year one, right? Maybe they get lucky and they find a CJ Stroud right out of the gate and the infrastructure helps elevate that young quarterback. Mm -hmm. Maybe the veteran bridge that they find is good enough for a half season or whatever. Or maybe they sit their rookie quarterback for a full year. But Mm -hmm. this roster, even without Kirk, this is like people think like, oh, you're going to run Jaron Hall out there all year or Nick Mullins. Right. No, they're not, yeah. dude. They're not. That's not what's going to happen. And they're and you're going to get a full season of Justin Jefferson here, too. So, But if they don't compete, like, let's say they don't compete. Okay. Like, we're so adverse. We're so afraid of, well, if they're not competitive, you know what happens then? 
you might get a high draft pick. And the other thing too is go back uh, to what we're going to see next March, which at yeah. this point is going to put them with so much uh, salary cap space. Like today, a, a year from now today could be absolutely nuts. Yeah. And that's going to lead to a almost certainly winning roster for, so like, this is a, this is a process. I, I, I was screaming at the, at, um, I, I had an, a serious an NFL network show on a couple of days ago. And I was screaming at the radio because nobody understands <laughs> roster construction. Were you construction. driving while you are screaming or what? Yeah. And Don's like, why are you so worked up? I'm like, cause nobody understands roster construction. Everybody <laughs> talks about these years. Like they're like, if you don't win in this year, your franchise is going to fold. Yeah. Like, like this is an opportunity. Today is an opportunity. If I'm a Vikings fan, if I'm a true Vikings fan, I am excited about this. This is going to be the shot. This is going to be crazy and Kevin's chance to take a shot to build a team in their personality. Like, this is exciting, folks. Yeah. Hey, before we get to a few more event liners here, a shout out to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. If you're a business owner out there, do you have a game plan in place to stay focused on safely, uh, I'm sorry, on safety and preventing claims? Let the team at Federated help support your business. Federated Insurance offers a customizable lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak as a business owner. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, a longtime partner of us here on Purple Daily and across Score North, it's our business to protect yours. Find out more at federatedinsurance.com. Also, for those of you that are going to come and hang out with us on April 25th at the Purple Daily Draft Party at the Fillmore in Minneapolis, it is sold out right now. We are looking for ways to unlock a few more tickets, so stay tuned on that. But we've partnered with Element Hotel right above the Fillmore. It's attached. It's literally just like connected to the Fillmore. A 15% room discount for the Purple Daily Draft Party attendees from the nights of April 25th through April 28th. Go to scorenorth.com slash hotel to get your discounted hotel rate. That's scorenorth.com slash hotel. Thank you to Element Hotel for their partnership. Okay, Dex, who's next on Vikings vent line? If you're just joining us, maybe you're at work. Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons. Four years, $180 million. Over half of that $100 million is guaranteed. All right, let's go to Corey, our guy Corey from Iowa. What's up, Corey? Corey. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, dude? Not much, not much. Uh, we dodged the bullet today. <laughs> dodged the bullet. I think... Uh, we, that would have been a crazy contract. We'd have been talking about another crazy guarantee contract yet again. Um, I think today's a good day. If I was the Vikings, I think they are filling their needs uh, for defense uh, for these next couple of days, free agency-wise. Good choice. Um, but now I think it's going to be Kevin O'Connell's pick. Don't even mess around. If you're going to go and get a quarterback, either get Jaden Daniels or Penix. I know people have a concern about Penix, but he can make all the throws. They're concerned about his knee, but he hasn't even been hurt in Washington. He may be an older quarterback, but he's more of a mature quarterback. You can throw right in there, and let's get going. You know, you got an all-star offense with J.J., Addison, K.J. Uh, you get you a good running back. I think if you're going to get a rookie, you need to find a good backup quarterback, not just a regular Mullins-type quarterback, a good quarterback, a good backup quarterback that can still get you a couple games and, and can – do what you ask the, the starting quarterback to do. Um, I think Kevin O'Connell is uh, hopefully coming into his own now. I hope he comes out being aggressive. Um, I know they, you're looking around and looking at our division. Everything looks young now. Everybody's getting younger. Uh, it was a perfect time for it. I uh, wish we could, you know, keep the nail hunter. But you know what? This is a business. You know what I'm saying? we got to move on with it. Um, I think we'll do really good here. Um, and if we have a down year, we have a down year. You know what? But, you know, it, like you guys said, take the swing. We're always the ones playing it safe all the time. This is play it safe. You know what? We're in a position to move up. Take the take the move up. Don't even mess around with it. Get the quarterback. I think Jaden Daniels uh, with uh, Justin Jefferson and he can hit all the throws. Heisman Trophy winner. Hey, let's let's go with it. You know, I mean, uh, Penix. If you're going to go with an older quarterback, I'd go with Penix. Uh, he can still. He's not a, a greatest mobile quarterback, but he can move when he needs to. Uh, he can make all the throws. Um, I just think let's be aggressive in this draft and let's, let's, look, this is the dawn of a new day. You know what I'm saying? Kirk got as far as he did. He had his moments, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's time to move on, get younger, get better, and, uh, be more excited about the future. Love it, man. Corey from Iowa, one of our favorite regulars on Vikings Vet Line. Put it perfectly. 
He's yeah. exactly right. We we could disagree on who they should draft, but like I I think what he said is going to be the view of most real fans of this team. Like the the cousins folks I think will probably go w- with him to Atlanta, but I think the real viewpoint, especially when the thing I like too is the Vikings have turned around and signed three guys on defense. So it's not like, oh my God, they're sitting on all of Kirk's cash, all of his Cole's cash, and what are they going to do? Like, they are proactively, I love the fact they're proactively going out and improving that defense for, I think he can say this safely, a guy that's proven he is one of the best defensive coordinators in the entire league. That's the other thing. I mean, think about the upgrade from that Donatel awful, terribly coached season to Brian Flores. Yeah, get him, get him his guys, man. And Van Ginkle is one of his guys from Miami too. Absolutely. I think I think he drafted Van Ginkle back in like 2019. The Absolutely. Packers continue to make moves today, so they did say goodbye to Aaron Jones and David Bakhtiari. They brought in Josh Jacobs, and they just signed free agent safety Xavier McKinney, yeah. previously with the Giants for a 17 million dollar a year contract, multiple yeah. year contract. Interesting. So the the Packers are are making a push for it. All right, who's next on Vikings vent line here? Yeah, a few left. Let's go to Mark next year. Hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, man. So first I want to kind of echo what Declan was saying about the 98 Vikings. Um, One, I don't think it's all on Gary Anderson uh, watching that. I mean, they're kicking field goals the whole game. And then to put it all on one guy is kind of like a failure of the team. So... Yep. People poo-pooing on Gary Anderson after being perfect for how many games just isn't fair. Um, second of all, uh, I'm a, I should say I was a Kirk Cousins guy for, you know, I was kind of cheering him on, hoping that everything worked out. But today I'm glad to see it happen the way it did. Because as the offseason progressed and I started hearing everybody's opinions and just weighing everything out, um, personally I'm glad to see him move on, get the thing he wants, And I think the Vikings get what they need. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of the fans that were kind of poo-pooing on Cousins as far as the, the Giants game, um, you know, he kind of carried the team throughout all of last season. The defense didn't do any, any benefits. So the one dimensional thinking, my, my, my venting is against the fans that are just so one dimensional in how they view the game. And to put it all on just one person, one person, one person. But, you know, he did make, Cousins made his mistakes. And I I do agree with you guys as far as him being um, um, time to move on. So I'm excited for the off, uh, for the uh, off season, the draft. I don't have, I don't know who really have an opinion on who to pick. That's up to the brass, but um, that's all I got. Yeah, Mark, thanks for coming thanks on, so. man. Appreciate you joining Ventline. Let's keep it rocking here. We got a couple left for sure. All right, let's go to Nick. He's enjoying the sunshine. What's nice. up, Nick? Yes, I am, gentlemen. Uh, happy Monday, right? Glorious time, <laughs> new era in Vikings football. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of agree with everything that callers and you guys have been saying. I think the whole fear monger or this fear of the unknown is is kind of BS, honestly, like, When's the last time the Vikings have ever had a quarterback guru type coach and let him take a swing and miss? So the the fear of the unknown, I think, is is misplaced. And yeah. I think it can galvanize Vikings fans that we can all, you know, recklessly speculate speculate on who we're gonna draft or who we're gonna bring in. But it it's an exciting time to see who you bring in. And I yeah, I just think the whole fear of the unknown and not taking swings, like that previous caller talked about being a Cubs fan, like I think this organization to a certain point is is foolproof in that respect. We're not going to have a Browns 25-year run where people are wearing paper bags on their heads at home games. So right. I, I'm just excited. I can't wait to hear, you know, Royce Unchained just rip Kirk a new one on how he <laughs> Hall of Fame bag chaser his way to Atlanta. So appreciate you guys. And, yeah, just exciting time for news. Awesome, man. Thank Thanks you, Nick. Stuff, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, he started on uh, Twitter. I, I just saw a Patrick tweet. Oh, Royce, he did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He just started on Twitter and let's just say, um, yeah, we usually steer clear of what Patrick likes to tweet about. Absolute hall of fame bag chaser though. Kirk cousins, man. Oh like, God. Yeah. He's a great, yeah. Just but, a legend. Today, again, to, I bow to, down to you. Today was his super bowl. 
And he threw for 450 yards and five touchdowns in the Super Bowl today. Well, he's I won. mean, what a perf- what talk about coming through in a high pressure situation, getting that contract today. Mm. He's got four rings. He's a fourth round pick. He's got four rings. Dude. Second every second here. most money in the history of yeah. the NFL in terms of uh single players. So yeah. Nine years of nothing but guaranteed contracts. It's incredible. Let's go to one last vent liner here. We've transitioned this thing from Purple Daily Reaction to the Vikings vent line. It's been good to get your guys' thoughts on it. Who's next, Declan? All right, let's go to Brandon. What's up, Brandon? Hey guys, how's it going? Hey man. Nice wild. Uh first time, first time venter. Um I've been a I've been a Kirk Cousins fan, but um gotta give him props for going and getting the bag. It's a business. Do your thing. Um excited to see what route we go draft wise. Um I'm not too sure if we should go a bridge QB or if we should just go for it in the draft and rock with Nick Mullins and throw for 500 yards and five picks every game, have a little fun with it. Um, I would not give Kirk that money. I think that's way too much. Um, Beforehand, I was under the thought process of, I take a look at Green Bay and I look at what they did with Aaron Rodgers and then what they're doing with Jordan Love and how they go about developing a quarterback and if we could have gotten Kirk on what Quasey wanted for one more year, you get your guy. You hear Kevin and Quasey talk a lot about developing a guy the right way. And with like Jaron Hall, they didn't want to just throw him into the fire because that can possibly hurt. Um, I thought Green Bay kind of just has a picture perfect how they're developing guys and it seems to be working for them. Um, but no, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fun off season. We're building the trenches on defense and – Defense wins championships, but I don't have a pick for who to draft. Um, I'm just excited to see what what it brings. So thank you, guys. Right on, man. Brandon, thanks, thanks Brandon. for coming on. We appreciate it. You know, it is it is pretty incredible that it's it's very easy to just sit here and say, hey, man, you're – Go to we'd all take the highest bid, right? We all if if another company offered you this, that, the other, but at no point in his football life, literally at no point, has he gone to the team and said, "Okay, this is a partnership, right? How can we together right. partner on this?" Like this this off season would have been a great opportunity for him, right, to say, "Yeah." How do we get JJ back in here? How do I want to make sure Daniil comes back and that we have a couple extra bucks to maybe go get someone in free agency? What What do you need from me to make that yeah, happen? It's it's Jefferson. never about that with him. Yeah, exactly. it, it's always about what can Kirk get for Kirk, either from the Vikings or somebody else. Mm-hmm. And the Falcons stepped up with a better structure and a bigger bag, and that's where that's that is Kirk's legacy. Kirk's legacy will be contracts. First ever fully guaranteed contract for a quarterback. Probably probably one of the biggest contracts you've ever seen for a 36-year-old player this late in his career, right? Aaron Rodgers has had a pretty big one with the Packers as well. But this, like at this point, winning games is not his legacy. He's only like a handful of games over 500 in his career. He has one playoff win. Contracts. He's if he gets a Hall of Fame bust, it'll be because of the contracts, not because of the on-field play. Well, the Players Association should build a bust for him right now. He is a hero there because their biggest thing is don't take team-friendly deals because that hurts our constituents, right? And the, the one thing I will say is, okay, it's one thing if you're, you know, if you're in a business and they come to you and you can get more. You should. You should. But let's talk about sports for a second because sports are different. And I understand, yes, it's a bottom line business and it can be brutal. So good for Kirk. But the reality is, if you're Kirk Cousins, what's left? Really winning. That's what's left. And and yes, you win in business. But I'm sorry, it's not the same as playing a team sport with a salary cap where you can literally help your team win. Mm-hmm. And Kirk Cousins, you, you would think at some point in time, could look at all of his contracts. Fourth round pick all of his contracts and say, you know what? I've done unbelievably well. I'm in a comfortable uh, position here. There are some people that don't want me back, but Kevin O'Connell's good to me. Does it bends over backwards to help me, calms me down when I'm upset, pats me on the head. (laughs) And, you know, I am in a situation where we do have all of these pieces that could make us a Super Bowl team. And darn it, just one time in my life, I'd like to take that run. 
I'd like to take that chance. Can mm -hmm. I make it? And I know me. You know, Kirk knows himself. Do you he think knows... he thinks he can win a championship? I don't think it ultimately matters to him. I don't yes. think he, I don't think he thinks at the end of the day, like if it, all right, Kirk, you're going to step into the octagon against Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl. I don't think he does. Thinks... Kirk think that Kirk can out gunsling the best quarterback in the world. No, I don't think not he, a lot yeah. of guys can, but I don't know that he thinks he can. And I think that's been part of his problem throughout his. No, because Kirk. Tenure. Well, and, and I think part of what so part of where Kirk has not changed is there is definitely an insecurity in Kirk. And it's sort of justified. He's a fourth round pick. He didn't what start for his high school team. He, he was like the fourth guy recruited at Michigan State. And it's great when that fuels you to success. But in Kirk's way, it's almost gone haywire. And what it's fueled him to do is stick it to everyone sort of financially to get their respect. Mm -hmm. Like Brady, sixth round pick, right? And he's like, okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you I'm one of the greatest quarterbacks of all bleeping time. And his fuel came that way. With Kirk, it's almost like, I'm going to show you. It's like, yeah, Kirk, how? By getting as much money as I can to force you From to the system that suppressed my... Respect yeah. me. Yeah. Respect me. And Washington, okay, we'll franchise you for two years. The Vikings come along. We'll pay a three... Year. Okay, that's what I want. It's weird. I don't claim to... Like, there are some things I get about him, but, like, what's the difference between a guy that says, I'm going to stick it to the world by winning as much as I can, yeah, and I'll take some team-friendly contracts, versus the guy who says, you know what, I'm going to make as much as I possibly can, and now it's the Falcons' job to get that championship. A couple other things here, boys, and, and, man, we've been rocking for almost two hours here. We also have an hour-long, before Kirk Cousins signed with the Falcons, there's an hour-long reaction to the initial wave of free agency where the Vikings signed uh, Jonathan Greenard. So oh, th this is probably a discussion for a different day, but did you notice the Vikings have only put out one statement today about Kirk and it's from Kwesi? Yeah. Is that kind of weird? Yes. First of there's, all, there's no statement from Kevin O'Connell. Well, it's weird. First of all, here's my question. When was it written? Was it written on Sunday? Was it written on Saturday? But was don't you think that they morning? would ordinarily well, they would no, do the, the Mark Will, Kevin no, O'Connell? because it's not. I think they will. It's not official yet. This is why it's weird. It's weird because it's not official. He can't sign until Wednesday. He could okay. flunk the physical. Like for all we know, he could flunk. And and then he's so. What's weird is that the Vikings proactively are confirming his departure. Forty eight right. hours before his departure can be official. My guess is we are going to get statements from O'Connell and the Wilfs come Wednesday. I find it very intriguing. And I have a respect for the proactiveness that the Vikings have issued a release about something that's not done yet. But it's, it's uh, you almost have to, right? Because all the reports are out there and you almost just to, for, for the, I think it's the Vikings way of telling everyone else too, like other bridge quarterbacks and free agents. Hey, just so you know, like, yeah, I'm going to give, we're the PR on. department, a lot of credit here because there's a lot of PR departments that would not have done this. Agreed. I like it. I'm just saying in this league, you ordinarily don't say a thing until things are on paper and there's no, and, yeah. and Kirk technically can sign till four o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, th there'll still be some stuff this week where I'm sure we'll tie up some loose Kirk ends, but gentlemen, this is Good pretty much line. the end of Kirk Cousins being the main central talking point of this podcast right i mean this is I we it. talk about everything vikings but kirk, yeah. kirk has taken up clearly the most bandwidth in terms of discussion topics on this podcast and now we get to talk about the future of the position which i'm excited about and is going to be a lot oh, of fun so great it's kirk though i just don't trust it's done till it's done it feels like the hand oh, in the grave is going what? to come out I'm just saying, I just have a weird gut. Like, I'm just not willing to. You to waited two hours to say that you think that there might be. Oh, no, I'm just saying Kirk, be, Kirk being Kirk. I just, I, I really want to see that contract signed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I don't. I've got no basis. Sign it. I've Sign got it, no conspiracy it. theory. I'm just saying you guys know there've been a few times where we're like, okay, enough Kirk. And then something else happens. Kirk's going to talk. He's going to be asked about this. I'm very curious to see what he says about his time here now and go like, there's just still interesting tentacles. There's loose ends for sure to be tied up, but yeah. I want that contract signed. I want him a Falcon. 
right now? Can we just say, hey, just sign and it early? Do it. Just sign it early right now, dude. And you can't do it. But yeah, I don't think there's, I think it gets done. I'm just, you know, the film's about to end. It's like Scream. We're waiting for the credits it's to go like all a, the way through. And then, hello, hello Kirk. <laughs> We sat yeah, there for ten, 10 minutes while the credits rolled, and now all of a sudden, yep. oh, there he is. Exactly. There's Kirk. He's Back inside U.S. Bank Stadium. Yep. So, all right. Well, plenty more throughout the week. And if any other big Viking signings happen before the end of the day, we might even hit you with a third episode later today. But um, if not, we will we will record our Tuesday episode tomorrow, and we'll be on alert for the rest of the week here. As the NFL free agency frenzy bonanza has landed in a big way at day one, baby. TCO Performance Center. It is. It's day one of a new Vikings era, and we are excited for it here. Judd, you know what? Get the flag for oh, a new wait. Vikings era. Now one more I, time. A new Vikings can, era. This I can get into. There you go, folks. There it is. Kirk might be gone, <laughs> but the Vikings are alive and well. Thank you guys for making Purple Daily one of the top football podcasts in America on the Apple charts. A couple of things you can do here. If you're still listening at the end, it means you probably like this podcast and we thank you for that. Click the like button and the subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel so you can get alerted every time we have new content. And on the audio side, Apple and Spotify, if you could please give us a five star rating and a positive review that helps us grow the show as well. So, OK, boys. Deep breath. We think we're done for today. We think we're done for today. But we'll see. <laughs> never, we'll, be, never know. we'll be waiting for more but news if, to come down. If the Vikings make the trade with the Patriots at like 5 p.m. where they've acquired the third pick, we'll be back. <laughs> we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl at some point before we die. And now they can get down to business building the next phase. We'll see you guys next time on Purple Daily.